Hello Indie Game fans, I do love the replayability that roguelites can offer, so here's a look at 10 new upcoming games in the space, where if you're confused between the definition of a roguelike L -I -K -E, and roguelite L -I -T -E, do watch the video linked above. Let's begin with Leviathan's Sword, a nice looking action roguelite with bullet hell elements, where I do love the pirate theme. It's a swashbuckling adventure as you fight a variety of foes, all on the quest to find the hidden treasure of the Leviathan. There is a central hub or base that you can upgrade, where the hook is that you are rescuing crewmates to add to your base, having a form of meta progression which should make the gameplay loop compelling. One design aspect which I found interesting is that while it is a bullet hell title, your primary attack is melee with a sword, although you do get access to guns with limited ammunition, making the action look pretty intense. Decent hand-drawn art as well, so fingers crossed it turns out well. Relentless Ranger is a pixel art roguelike platformer that looks alright, set in a classic high fantasy world, where there are a variety of different paths that your character can go down in terms of skills and progression. Nine different disciplines to train in, from archery to beast mastery, means a variety of different possible builds with what looks to be quite the classic RPG style equipment and loot, with damage ranges, special abilities and so on. The pixel art is alright, not the most mind-blowing but pretty decent, if a little difficult to read in some environments, but a title of interest for sure. I have mentioned Mid Autumn in a recent video since it's a pixel art action roguelite that has to be inspired by Hades, but with Asian deities instead of Greek gods, where it's currently on Kickstarter seeking funding. Your character unwittingly stumbles into the spirit world, having to fight evil spirits and to save your hometown from gentrification. The way that the ancestral spirits pop in sure looks like Hades, but learning from the best isn't a bad thing, and as an Asian person myself, I'm happy to see this being made with quite a diverse group of developers working on this, so do support them if you can. I got a press release for Die After Sunset and thought that it might be of interest since A. It's a third person shooter which we don't get that many of in the space and B. Does kind of look like Fortnite for better or worse, depending on how you feel about the game. You're fighting off the Murkor invasion, a species of vaguely reptilian or murloc-like creatures which are supposed to be cute and adorable in the light but turn into terrifying monsters in the dark. As such, light and shadow and the day-night cycle is a central feature where you're building up your power in order to take on the boss having a little bit of a risk of rain feel to it. An interesting looking action roguelite is Rules of Alchemy, the self-described spell combo roguelite with thousands of items and hundreds of spells. Spells are cast in real time through the combination of other spells, allowing you to mix and match for maximum flexibility. There are also 9 weapon classes, from sword and shield to dual lances, so it's not all meiji stuff in this. However, it does say that it has an open world structure, so I'm not sure how that would fit in with a roguelite, but for the potential that this has, it gets a spot. A 
fascinating looking roguelite is Dome Romantic, having a very interesting setup in combining a mining element of a steamroll dig or super mother load with a real-time base defense element, where you're fighting off monsters and preventing them from destroying your dome. In a space that is pretty saturated with platformers and action-adventure games, this is a very welcome change of pace, so it gets a great spot on the list. Quick disclaimer, the developer of Below the Stone is on my Discord and does occasionally watch this channel, but I do have to give props where it's due, since this caving and mining action roguelite does look fantastic. It's currently on Kickstarter and the people have spoken, already being fully funded without any nudging by me, so if you love titles like Undermine, certainly give this a look. The most interesting aspect is that resource gathering and mining is a central part of the design, changing up the flow of gameplay as compared to the more action and combat focused games, so it's something different worth a look. Indie developers have done it again in making me interested in golf, where the self-titled golf-like game, Cursed to Golf, is of interest, where the developers explain it in detail, so enjoy. Hello. I'm Liam Edwards, I'm the creator and director of Curse to Golf here in Kyoto, Japan at Chuhai Labs. Curse to Golf is a golf-like. It tasks players with taking on 18 dungeon-like holes throughout golf purgatory. It takes place in this beautiful pixel art world full of unique characters and interesting areas where you only have three clubs and a golf ball, alongside powerful power-ups called ace cards to avoid the deadly and dangerous hazards in hopes of surviving each hole on your way to ascension. Curse to Golf is inspired by classic roguelikes and metroidvanias with a smatter of retro golf games. I wanted to create a roguelike in which movement was really interesting for the player, which led me to experimenting with physics. I started with a ball in a dungeon, and that led me to a sport I played as a kid, golf. Golf is a sport that everyone inherently understands. You just smack a ball and it's fun. You go to a driver range and you hit a ball and it's fun. In Curse to Golf, we wanted to harness the fun of golf combined with the depth of a roguelike where every shot counts. Throw in power-ups, characters, and a hint of existentialism, bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a good time. And that's Curse to Golf in a golf ball. The talented team and I here at Chiu Hai Labs are really excited for you to play the game, and we hope that you get to play it soon. Thank you. Ah! I'm a sucker for the pixel art action rope light, so of course, Critadel gets a spot. An intense looking game with 3 playable characters, over 100,000 weapon configurations, and just great looking action. The pixel art is on point as well, with the great boss designs, making this high on my personal list of games to watch. Since I do look at and play a lot of roguelites, it's always nice to get something different in the space, where Dragon's Wandering Tavern is a so-called roguelite management game. So alright, colour me intrigued. You play as a dragon, wandering the forest and running a tavern, brewing potions, trading with villagers, crafting items, cooking food and more. It's Ghibli inspired with the world and art, and it's a non violent, peaceful game as well, so 10 points for creativity, taking the number one spot. For more roguelite titles, watch these videos, and I will see you after the jump.